Uh, got a flyer from Pastor Shooting Creek Church of God. They'll be having a revival April the 10th through April the 15th with uh, Evangelist Terry Bowley as their speaker. <coughs> you can be a part of that. You will be a part of that. Prayer meeting tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, all of the uh, video come. We finished up our video this past Monday, but we decided we're going to start it all over again, watch it all over again. So if you want to come, be a part of that. Come with me. Also, big announcement this morning. Those of you who are on Facebook, you go to Church of God, Hazel Church of God Happenings, or to my Facebook. You can click on where Brother Jerry Lucas put on there a link to his website, and he's recording Wednesday night services by audio and Sunday morning, Sunday night services by video. So we'll be broadcast across the world, the World Wide Web, so if you want to go there and check it out. Amen. So that uh, we can get the word out wherever we can. So we'll, uh, if you need the URL to that, just let us know. It is www.jerryluthorministries.com. You can go to his web page, you can click on the radio button or the TV button. The radio gets the audio, and the TV gets the, the video, I assume. So uh, go back and check it out. He also has some worship praise music on there. So go check it out. Amen. Let us glorify the Lord and spread Him all over the world.
Bob was here with us tonight, you know that I came up for prayer. And I'm here to report that God works. He's still in the healing business. I came up for prayer to get off this oxygen. Praise the Lord, I was able to take my hand and raise off too. <laughs>
And they wondered why this lady didn't go to the house across the department across the hallway for help or why she didn't as she went by the store to stop into the store for help or to stop at the phone booth to call for help. And, and they wondered why she made it three blocks all the way down to the church trying to get into the church. And so they wondered why all this took place. And so the pastor finally came and they began to question the pastor. And the pastor recognized her and said, yes, she's a young lady that we taught some Bible study to about a year ago. And the officer said, so she's a member of your church. No. He said, I don't know that she went to church anywhere. We just had the privilege of teaching her uh, about a year ago. And so uh, she died there in the lower house of the church. Amen. And so they wondered why she tried to make it all the way to the church. I want to tell you why she did. Because I believe she understood about Jesus and she was trying to get to the church for heaven. Amen. I think she knew she was dying and she wanted to make heaven her home before she passed from this life. I read a story about that in the Bible. Amen. I believe it's in 2 Kings. Amen. Where, where uh, 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 a man went and took a concubine. Amen. And, and he brought her home. He married her, brought her home. And she left, went back to her home. And he went and got her, brought her back to his house. But on the way home, they had to stop into another city. And in that other city, they went into a gentleman's house. And the men of come in after the night, come in and say, We want to know this man. Bring him out. And so the owner said, No, I have a daughter and have his concubine. You can take them and have your way with it. And so they wound up taking the concubine of this man, this man's wife, and he gave her over to them to have their way with her. And during the night, they had her way with her. And she came back to the door of this place and died at the door of her owner. Amen. Or at the where she was dwelling. Amen. That's why. Because she was died in her sin. She was an harlot. The Bible said she was a whore. Amen. So she died in the lifestyle that she was in. And so I wonder how many this morning are dying in sin. Dying in their lifestyle. When there is an open door before them for salvation and for eternal life. Amen. Jesus here represents himself as the door unto salvation. The only way of safety. Amen. Salvation must be found in him alone. According to Philippians Philippians 3 and verse 9. Neither is there salvation in any other. For oh, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved according to Acts 4 and verse 12. There is an open door before us, church. An open door before the lost sinners of this world. If they will only step in through that door. Amen. 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 Glory to God. He that presents himself today as the door of the sheep. Amen. John 10 and 7 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door. Amen. All that ever came before me in verse 8 are thieves and robbers. Amen. And it shows the importance of his statements. Amen. What was he saying? Amen. All that ever told you there was another way. All that ever told you that there was another door. Ain't nothing but thieves and robbers. Amen. Because they deceive and bring deception upon people and take them down a wrong path. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible tells us that He is the only door into salvation. It is through Jesus Christ. He said, by me. Amen. In John 14 and 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh for the Father. Amen. But by me. Amen. We must go through Jesus Christ, the door, the open door. He told us in Revelation 3, verse 1, I think it was somewhere along there. He said, there is an open door before you. Amen. To the to those in Ephesus. Amen. So there is an open door, amen, that we must go through, amen. We must choose. You know that old show that used to be on, uh, what was the name of it? Uh, well, you had to choose a door. Somebody help me out. Let's make a deal. Amen. Which door will you choose? Amen. Amen. That's what is before the world. Which door will you choose? Will you choose death or will you choose life? Amen. Jesus said to choose you this day whom you will serve. Amen. Death or life. Amen. It's up to us to walk through that open door. Hallelujah. Amen. To his holy name. Glory to God. In verse 10, the Bible said that there is a purpose of his coming. He said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. I don't know about you. That's what I want. Amen. Glory to God. Now before I got saved, I was living. Amen. I had life, but I wasn't living. I was dead in my sins and did not have life. But when I walked through that open door, and then when Jesus convicted my heart, and then when the King of Glory came and, and moved me into his bosom and I accepted him, he gave me a life. Let me 
penetrated. There's a lot in, 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 the, in the ICUs and, and, and in places in the world. They have life, but they're not living. But they have life because of machinery and because of this and that, but they're not, they do not have that abundant life. And when we accept Jesus, there comes abundant life with His giving. Amen. When he gives eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 11 says that he is the good shepherd. Amen. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Amen. It shows his love and concern for the church and for the lost people of this world. Amen. He come to seek and to save that which is lost is what the Bible tells us. Amen. He didn't come to condemn the world, but he came to save the world. Amen. Well, the Bible tells us that we are already condemned in our sin. Amen. The Bible says, therefore, after the condemnation is gone and we accept Jesus, Romans tells us that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus and are called according to His purpose. Hallelujah. There's life in Him when we trust in Him and give Him glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 12 tells us that the description of the hireling. Amen. That He said in verse 12, but, the, but he that is in hireling seeth the wolf coming and liveth the sheep and fleeth. Amen. Those who have not been called of God, when trouble comes, they vanish. Amen. Glory to God. I've seen so many pastors. Amen. When, when trouble comes, they're ready to pull up stakes and go somewhere else. Amen. Let me tell you, I've been with you through the thinking of thin. Amen. We've had our share of trouble. We've had our share of Put the blood over the door, they are saved 
saved by God's grace. But when they did not, the death angel came in and killed the firstborn of every family. Amen. But if they put the blood up there, Jesus saved them by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And they have salvation through God Almighty. Amen. Glory to God. Let me tell you, have you got the blood over the door closed of your heart this morning? Amen. If you've got it sprinkled upon the, your heart's door, amen, so that the devil cannot steal you away, so the death angel cannot come in and take you away from the Lord Jesus Christ. I think when we have applied the blood of Jesus, he saves us, amen, and secures us through his blood. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. There was another door or a gate of the tabernacle in Exodus 27 and 16. Amen. It was a door of approach to God. It, it was a doorway that went into the uh, into the court of God. And it was the only place that the children, the children of Israel were allowed to go. Amen. So it says that it was a place of interest unto the Lord Jesus Christ and unto God Almighty. Amen. We have to come before Jesus. He said there is an open door before you. And we have to go through that door to get to where he is. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He doesn't force himself on no one, does he? Amen. You, uh, most of you seen that picture. Uh, 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 and some of you got it on your walls uh, uh, of a, uh, uh, a big door and, and a person on the inside, an angel on the outside. There's a door knob on the inside. There's a knob on the outside. And the angel's at the door knocking. And it says that, that it's saved to us that if we want him in, we've got to open the door and let him in. Amen. But you can turn him away if you choose to. Amen. Oh, happily. I don't know why anybody want to turn the Lord Jesus away when He's so good to us, when He gives us uh, a life abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. There was a door into the wedding in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 10. Amen. Glory to God. It was a door of separation. They sent out the decree to all to come into the wedding. But some, they give excuses why they had to go here or why they had to go there. But when those who they brought off the streets came in, the Bible said that they shut them in. Amen. And shut out the crowd. Amen. That's what Jesus does with you and I. He, he brings us in and shuts the doors to the enemy. Amen. And helps us glory to God. The door of mercy is closed in Luke 13 and 25 where it says when once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut the door and you begin to stand without and knock at the door saying Lord, Lord, open unto us and he shall answer and say unto you I know you not which ye were. Amen. It was a door of finality. It was a door that said you're no longer welcome to come through this door. Amen. Let me tell you this morning. Jesus only strives with a man for so long. He only convicts a heart for so long. And then after we reject him and reject him and reject him, he shuts the door and he doesn't offer it anymore. Amen. When will it be your last day? When will be the sinner's last day to accept him and to walk through this open door that is before us this morning? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. We don't want to get into that finality with God because when he shuts the door, there is no opening. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Revelations 3 and 20 tells us that the, there is a door of the heart. And then it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Amen. There is an open door of your heart, but you have to open it to let him in. Amen. He doesn't force himself on anymore. He's a perfect gentleman. He offers his free gift to us, and then it's up to us. Amen. If we are Christmas time or birthdays or any other time someone brings us a gift that presents this to us, how many of us turn it away? I don't know one of you that will turn it away. Amen? We all accept that gift, not knowing what it is. When Jesus offers us the salvation, when we are lost in our sins, we don't know what we are getting. Amen. We don't know the fullness of it. But he gives us a glimpse in his word. Amen. That when we receive him, that we receive his fullness and his glory. Amen. And his majesty. We receive peace unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. And we find ourselves in a steadfast relationship with him. Amen. And he helps us all through life when we surrender to him. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. There's another door. Amen. There's a door in heaven. Revelation 4, verse 1. Amen. The Bible says, when John's speaking, he said, After this I look, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Hallelujah. Through his name. I think he's kind of like Moses in the wilderness. Whenever he 
he saw the burning bush up on the mountainside and said, I must turn aside and go see this great thing. Amen. I believe that God, when he saw this open door, I believe he had it in his heart. I must go see what's behind this door. Amen. And then the Bible said that he heard a boy saying, come up hither. And the angel took him through the door and showed him all the glories of God. And God tried to write and tell us about it. Amen. And we still can't fathom what some of the things that God wrote about. He didn't know what he was writing about because he was only trying to uh, relate what he knew as the earthly. Amen. And so we see the beauties that lie there and the grandness that is there. Amen. When we behold the door that is in heaven, let me tell you, there's still a door in heaven that is open. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. The King of all glory. And he wants to invite you in through this door. And all we have to do is to accept his call and come unto him. And he will save us and give us eternal life. Amen. Oh, heaven. Well, what is the value of these doors that are open? Amen. Well, it is an entrance. It is an entrance into the ark. It is an entrance into mercy. It is an entrance into the tabernacle. It is an entrance into heaven. It is an entrance into the Lord Jesus Christ where we are filled with all fullness and glory. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said that it is the only way, the only name according to John 14 and 6. Amen. It has two sides to it. Amen. All doors have was two sides. There is the inside and the outside. Amen. And it's up to us on which side of the door we want to be in. I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to be on the inside of the door, not the outside. Amen. Because in the wintertime, the outside of the door is cold. But on the inside, it's always warm and fuzzy. Amen. Well, when the enemy's coming, I want to be on the inside of the door. Because outside the door, I'm vulnerable. Amen. For the attack of the enemy. Hallelujah. So when I come to you, I want to be on the right side of the door. Amen. Inside there, uh, there we enjoy what is there. Outside to be excluded from the blessings and the privileges. Amen. Inside the door. Amen. There, there, there's a... Well... Inside my mother-in-law's door on Sundays after church, there's good food. Amen. <laughs> outside the door, you go hungry. Amen. So I want to be on the inside of the door. Amen. When we are uh, coming to the house of God, there's blessings abounding on the inside of the door. Amen. And there's, a, there's evil and cursings on the outside of the door. Amen. So we need to be on the inside to, to bask in all that God has to give us this morning. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And, and when, you know, when you come up to a door, there's this one step from the outside to the inside. Oh, hallelujah. How simple salvation it is. And then there's one step, this one accepting of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we step out of sin and into Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, step and we leave the world behind. And then heaven before us. Amen. It just takes one step. And then a step of faith coming to Jesus Christ and accepting Him as Lord and Savior. Oh, hallelujah to His holy name. Glory to God. And we find ourselves under the asking in His goodness. Amen. It is just one step from the outside in. Amen. All are treated alike when inside this door. Amen. Kings and emperors, saints and beggars, they are all treated equal. There is no big eyes and little ewes. There are no colors in heaven. There is no colors behind this door. Amen. We are all seen as one. The church of God. Amen. That's what the Bible tells us. That we all belong to the church of God of Jesus Christ. Amen. And He helps us Amen. To have eternal life. Glory to God. Those inside are safe. Amen. When you are inside the door of God, you are safe. Amen. Undesirables are shut out. All of the household can go in and out. The Bible said that when we come into Him, we can go in and out and find pasture. Amen. What does that tell us? It says that there's safety and security. Amen. And when we go, whether we're in or whether we go out into the pastures, amen, and the cool springs run through the green pastures, it says there is nourishment. Amen. When you go out into the green pastures, amen. When we are in Him, He helps us. Amen. To strive in Jesus' name. Amen. There's no in peace on the inside. Amen. Song of Solomon 2 verse 4 says, He brought me into his banquet house, and his banner <coughs> is over me was love. Amen. He loves those who he calls. Amen. 
Amen. He loved those who come to Him. He loved those who doesn't come to Him. Amen. But those who come to Him, He pours out His love and blessings upon. Amen. The psalmist said in chapter 34 and verse 8, He said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord, He is good. Amen. The Psalms in 16 verse 11, it says, In thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Glory to God. The psalmist said in verse 144 and verse 15, he said, Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Hallelujah. When you have Jesus as Lord, you're a happy person. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Well, now, how many of you can actually say I was happy when I was in sin? Not me. We thought we were, though, didn't we? We thought we were living it up. We thought we were having the greatest time of our life. But when we laid our head down on our pillow at night, we was the bed most miserable because we didn't have the Lord Jesus in our hearts. Amen. We couldn't go to sleep in peace. We couldn't wake up in peace because we wondered what the tomorrow would hold. Amen. But when we get got saved, when the Lord saved us, amen, he laid our head down in peace at night so we could rest during the night. Amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. I've never had as much fun in my life as I have since I've become a Christian. Amen. Since I give my heart to Jesus, I've been able to go to places and see things that I wouldn't have been able to if I had not accepted the call of Jesus Christ. Amen. He'll take you. Amen. Where the devil cannot take you. Amen. Into the splendors of God. Hallelujah. And he will bless you with all spiritual blessings. Amen. And happy you will be when you make him the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. The world, the Lord warns us that He shut. Amen. There's coming a day when God is going to shut the door. Hallelujah. You remember the story. Amen. <coughs> Matthew 25 and 10. The five foolish virgins came to the door too late, and the door was shut. <coughs> you recall the story? How <coughs> did the bridegroom? How they begin to cry out, the bridegroom cometh. Amen. And, and five of those virgins had wasted their oil, five had saved theirs. And when they heard the call that the bridegroom was coming, and then the, the, the five foolish began to call on the five wives and say, Let us have of your oil. And they said, Not so, lest we not have enough for ourselves, but go uh, to those who buy and uh, to sell and buy for yourself what you have to do. And when they come back, the door had been shut. Amen. And they couldn't go into the right room. Amen. There's a day coming. Someday the master will rise up and shut the door. Genesis 7 and 16. And the Lord shut the door upon Noah and his family. Amen. Too late. Too late. Sad words. Amen. When you begin to knock. Too late. Too late. That's what we're going to hear. Amen. Let me tell you, today is not too late. Today you can call on Jesus. If you just come on to the, to the musical instruments. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Choose you today whom you will serve. Amen. There is an open door before us. Amen. In Revelation chapter 3, where it says that there was an open door, the church of Ephesus. It was a door of opportunity. To go out and to win the most for Jesus Christ. Amen. And there is a door open before you and I this morning to go out and win lost people to Jesus Christ. Amen. Now my question to you this morning is will you take advantage of that open door? Sinner, will you take advantage of the open door this morning? Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. Oh, sinner, come home. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know him this morning? Glory to God. Do you know him this morning? And the love that he has. Maybe you're here this morning. You say, well, I really don't know him. Will you come? Maybe you knew him intimately at one time. And you just sort of slip back on the Lord and don't love me like you once did. Would you come? 
He cheered up with an open door. And it's just one step from the outside to the end. And he's calling, sinner, will you come? Backslider, will you come? Those who are downhearted, will you come? Those who are oppressed, will you come? Those who are hurting, will you come? Those who are sick and afflicted, will you come? And the Lord has help for you this morning as we stand on our feet this morning. Hallelujah to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Can you just praise Him a little this morning? Glory to Brother Michael. Brother Michael. Sing the song this morning. Hallelujah. Will you just lift up holy hands and praise Him? If you've been saved, you ought to have something in your heart to be joyous over. You ought to have something to praise Him for, to glorify His name in. Amen. He's worthy that we praise Him and lift up holy hands and give Him honor and glory this morning. Amen. So, so just give Him your full heart this morning. Amen. Someday there's going to be a shut door for us even to worship Him. Amen. So worship Him while you can upon this earth. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. The world's trying to shut you down right now. The government's trying to shut you down right now. So worship Him while you can. Oh, we praise you, Lord. God, we praise you today.
to God. I don't know about you, but whenever the door is shut, I want to be on the inside. I want to be bowing my knee on the inside and not on the outside. Don't you? Amen. That day when it comes, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. But the sad part is, a lot of people ain't going to make heaven their home. They're going to confess him as Lord and then go off into hell for eternity. What a sad, sad day that will be. Amen. People need the Lord. Amen. So let's do our part. Share the gospel. Share the gospel wherever we go. Amen. Blessed be the Lord.